How is it going, guys? Luke here, back with some more Pot Lemon Omar content. Hope you're all doing well. I opened up four tables. PLO 50, as you can see. We're gonna play the great game of Pot Limit Oma. If you guys enjoy this content, then make sure to give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel so you will get notified when I upload new content, which I do on a regular basis. So anyway, let's get going. You can see four tables. And um, I also have my HUD available. This is PLO 50. There will be some stats I do expect at least to be in there. Normally, I don't play PLO 50, but there are definitely players in the pool that occasionally also play PLO 100 or 200. Anyway, we're gonna get going. And today, I want to specifically focus on flop decision making. What I do find helpful when playing sessions, not always, but at least sometimes is to have like a specific focus on like one part of the game. Maybe it's a part of the game that you've been recently studying. Maybe it's a part of the game that you're more interested in or where you are unsure. And you can do that to take some additional time to really try to think deeper and understand the note better when you are in that situation. Today I want to go through that process for flops. So whenever I have a flop decision, I probably going to take a little bit more time, try to explain my thinking process there and basically go from there. Four tables. Let's see if there's anything interesting that we can spot right away. You can see I don't have too many color codings at the moment for these players. Uh, table number three, bottom left is one. We got a player that is playing 91 VPIP. So I will tag this player. I'm gonna give him the dark blue color. I think it's very helpful to tag players, give them a color fairly quickly. It doesn't have to be completely accurate right away. You can always adjust later on, of course. Anyway, um, easy call. King, Jack, Jack, seven. Flop and over pair and a backdoor flush draw. Fairly dry board. A pretty large sizing. And I think against this sizing, we can actually just fold my bear over pair. I don't have a pair blocker. I don't have a straight draw. I don't have great playability and realizability of my equity when we call. My hand is not good enough to check raise. So I don't mind really to fold that one right away. Uh, how many players do we have in the pool on iPoker right now? It is around, I mean, I think there are almost like eight tables running along that line. Definitely a good amount of people in the pool. Money goes all in the bottom. Seven, six, four, three wins. And if you play these games yourself, then try to think about like what makes these games different, for example, from like higher stakes games or even lower stakes games. Like what is the tendency on this stake? 
how do people approach the game how do recreational players play how do regular players play i think there are a couple of key ids and takeaways on these stakes i think the recreational players they often play too passive they do a lot of limping and uh, they do a lot of cold calling so you'll end up in a lot of multiple pots they are generally speaking not that aggressive although they are of course like very aggressive maniacs in there always and then the regulars i think in general they are too tight they are also not aggressive enough uh so they often overfold in the big blind for example versus steals um they don't have enough bluffs in their batting ranges on flop turns and rivers they're probably a little bit too passive pre-flop as well when it comes to potential steals so i think the general tendency is that people are more on the passive side than on the aggressive side although there are of course enough of those players in there as well uh okay so table number four we're going to three bet king king seven king king six five double um but now against a raise and a fold uh i think we're gonna fold and on this table i would say we have a squeeze against an ep race and a button call like the buttons playing a lot of hands ep can have a ton of stuff like in this board we got trips uh, there are flush draws out there that we can get some value from and also protection again so i think we do want to bet our hand interesting turn I think I will check. And I think at this point we do have the best hand. Although, I mean, this player is very passive. We can go for a block bet, something like 12. And then get called by Azax. Uh, in the meantime, table number two i do open race flop top pair flush draw but we are four way so i would say we probably need a better hand to bet like more nuttiness we could even bet an unfold versus a race four ways but i think checking in hope to see a turn is probably the way to go we turn two pair i don't think it's that likely either of these players will have six three or ace three these guys already checked so i'm fairly confident we have the best hand could be a little bit thin but uh, let's see what happens if we go for a bet take it down in the meantime on table number three we open race don't have a gutter even. We don't have a gutter even. I mean, this player is so wide that I don't mind just betting. Like, he plays 90% of his hands. This is actually a turn we're going to continuously bet on. We're going to wrap the straight now. My opponent folds. Nice hand, ace, queen, jack, nine, double. Middle pair, gutter, two back door, flush draws. Again, my opponent is very wide. We can, I think we can definitely bet here, given his preflop range. But is there really benefit in it? We don't really need protection. Uh, it's hard to get called by weaker. So I don't mind just checking and then potentially going for like value on later streets or see what happens basically. Uh, obviously we're going to call don't see really a reason to raise uh, that's a very bad river and now we're going to fold
What else do we have when it comes to opponent at the table? We got Bobo Bobo Boy Ka on table number one. Also playing a lot of fans. I'm gonna give this guy the purple color actually. And we got Need for Action, who seems to be more... has like more normal stats, I would say. So I'm going to give him a... This color. Uh, table number four. Pretty interesting, I would say. We're going to rebat this one. Let's see what happens. We get a call by Bobo, who is playing a lot of hands. We know that. Let's see if this player can fold like under the cap. Don't have too many hands on him yet. Uh, Jack 4-4 four, four rainbow. Pretty good board for my range. When you think about all the hands that I will have, I will have a lot of aces. Problem is that this player is very short. Uh, and I'm not sure if he's going to fold like queens, kings, jack, x, even a four. So, given that he's so short, I mean, we could bet like very small. Like something like eight. I think we should probably do it. And we get called. So this is one of those spots where you can think about your range. Okay, we will have the majority of best over pairs, of course. So we're going to bet a lot. Maybe even full range. Therefore, this hand gets in there as well. But okay, now we are definitely checking. And fold. I think this player is going to call and... You can easily have like Jack Jack at this point, I would say, or 4x. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, King's not folding, Queen's not folding. So if those hands don't fold, then yeah, Queen Queen nine four single he had. Uh, picking up aces bottom left. Coming in for the three bet again against the same player. We get a call by our friend in the big blind who plays 90% of his hands. Uh, we got a three, one heart. Uh, not a board we are going to stack off on, first of all, with our bare aces. I also don't see this hand as being strong enough to bet, even though we have a 3 and an 8. I think we just have not enough fold equity and equity in case we get called. So I'm going to check and take a free card. Again, think about your range. We are going to do a decent amount of checking on boards like this, just because we have a good amount of like bare aces that don't connect, that cannot bet and stack off. Uh, we turn two pair. Again, we're going for a check. Uh, there are some straights out there now, that's for sure. Let's see if we can get to showdown or that this player is going to bet. Okay. And we win. That's very nice. That's very nice, guys. So we're up against... That. Anyway, I'm uh, going to check kings on table number one. Let me quickly see what these guys had. So they had queen, queen, seven, five. Ace, queen, queen, ten. Yeah. And this player could have turned his hand into a bluff, but he's very passive. You can also see that at the aggression factor, 1.2. Not really into batting that much. happy to take that one down table number three 
completely miss. So let's check as a start. My opponent checks back. Let's check again. Now we have an ace. We're going to get to showdown. And we lose. Uh, table number one. We're going to bet. Even though we have two back backdoor flush wars, the hand doesn't play too great as a check. And also we have decent blockers on the flop and on future streets. We don't turn blockers or equity. So we are going to check now. And it will very often go check, check. And then we are going to lose, I would say, against King X. Yep. Mm, table number three. We face a pot size bet by this opponent. And we have top pair flush for. I think we have to call at least once. Now we have top two pair. So we're beating like 9 8, for example. My opponent bets again. Kind of weird. Like, don't think we can fold. Probably going to lose now. Yep. We're going to fold also. Uh, table number two. We face a raise and a three. But this is not a hand you want to call. Single suited hands like these don't do that well against tight ranges. So let's fold it. And in the meantime, we are facing a squeeze from Bobo. We're going to call in position. King check 7 8 double. Uh, we flop a gutter. Let's hope he checks. But he doesn't. And we're going to fold. Weak. weak, unfortunately. Oh, look at this guy. Look at this. We would have turned the nuts. Would have turned the nuts. Let's see what these guys end up having. I would say this guy probably has a straight at this point. Jack 10 7, probably a 3 bet that this guy would open. We flop top pair, back door flush ball. We have a 7. turn. Uh, we're going to bet three quarter spot. And we river the third nuts. So the question now is what size in? Like we also blocked the I think I'm going to go for a half pot. Like we also blocked the 10 high flush. The 9 high flush is not available. So we're blocked. So there are a lot of weaker flushes that can call us. Not in there. So we're really targeting straight and very weak flushes, I would say. Guys, if you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and also check out the link below this episode. If you want to learn more about pot limit Oma's strategy, click on the link and head over to plomastermind.com, of course. I hope you enjoyed this 
quick episode playing some PLO 50. Over and out, guys. This was Luke. Hope to see you soon with a new episode with some pot limit my content. GG.